the presentation is titled, Is This Love? So the purpose of this um, discussion or presentation is to reflect on love, infatuation, and jealousy, and distinguish love from these related emotions. The outline um, is things are we are going to be discussing, so confusing certain feelings with love, what happens if this feeling is confused with love, um, can this feeling be a part of love, um, and also addressing the importance of figuring out one's own beliefs about the difference between love and other feelings. So what is love? Um, these are definitions obtained from Webster's, um, Webster's Dictionary, um, and I'm just going to read them real quick. Um, strong affection for one another for, I'm sorry, strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties, attraction based on sexual desire, affection, and tenderness felt, connection based on admiration, benevolence, unselfish loyalty, concern for the good of another, or common interests, warm attachment, enthusiasm, or devotion to hold dearly. So what this really means, I'm sorry, I don't know why this is together, I promise you this is supposed to be space. What this really means is, um, you know, going back to this, these definitions, um, is that love is vital to the well-being of a person. Love is based on and best expressed through trust, honesty, and respect. There are many types of love that we receive daily. And before you can call, before you can love anyone else, you must first love yourself. So self-love and, um, you know, in general, loving yourself is very important. The illusion of love. So there's this idea or question that I posed is, is can you have real love when you only focus on one side of the story? Um, so infatuation and jealousy can seem romantic since they are very intense emotions and are often tied to sexuality. Oftentimes emotions such as infatuation and jealousy do not express true love. They can sometimes point to the insecurity, anxiety, and in some cases the mental health um, of the person feeling these intense emotions. And just to go a little bit deeper into this idea of the illusion of love, um, Far too often, individuals con confuse the intense feelings they have um, for another person for love. And popular culture or like our society and social constructs, um, it doesn't help. So like these movies, these books, these so social media, TV shows, um, music, um, they all tell stories um, for intense feelings. Well, they tell stories of these intense feelings, but um, none of these tales uh, of love are really love um, in real life. We can all, I think the majority of us can agree to that. It's just this illusion of love. So more specifically, um, I would like to put in here like young individuals, young people see this version of love oftentimes and, and they believe it. Uh, um, this, is, this is something of personal experience from my end, speaking for myself but also um, speaking with my friends and, you know, ta having young siblings, all of which are teenagers. Um, so I can relate to a certain extent. And, it, and this could be wrong for some individuals, and I just want to make that clear that, that that's okay as well. Um, but one thing to keep in mind about this idea of the illusion of love is that the key is the person feeling those feelings is not concerned about what the other person is feeling, only their own emu uh, own emotions and feelings. So going back to this question, can you have real love when you only focus on one side of the story? Um, can we agree that that's very debatable and, and probably not, right? Okay, so infatuation. Infatuation is a person who is in, well, a person who is infatuated often desires to hoist their feelings on the person they desire. Um, they want to feel vindicated for their feelings and wants the other person to feel the same, sometimes to the point of coercion. Um, if you're trying to convince someone why the relationship is so awesome or great or pleading for love or even threatening an individual for fear of rejection, um, 
would you call this love? Um, it's just something to keep in mind. The fact that love and infatuation start in a similar manner, which I do want to make that clear, which is why it can be so confusing sometimes. Love, I believe personally that love and infatuation do start in a similar manner. And it makes it very difficult to differentiate between the two, especially in the beginning, like this idea of the honeymoon phase or when you guys are just starting to date or talk. Um, the lines can be blurred is what I'm trying to say. So while bonding strengthens in the case of love, feelings fade away in the case of infatuation, which is why people believe that love is a divine feeling while infatuation is, I guess you can argue, a mere physical attraction type of thing. Um, so just something to keep in mind again. Common infatuation traits, um, grows rapidly, love at first sight, uh, oftentimes it does not last long. It's centered on a few admired traits of, in the other person. Um, I, I just mentioned this based on physical traits. Um, a lot of individuals who are in, a, in an infatuation stage or phase or situation, um, they are, it stays the same for a long time and, it, and oftentimes it doesn't go anywhere. Um, selfishness and possessiveness, um, of an individual may occur, this idea of jealousy, um, you have disagreements, you fight, you can't concentrate on necessary tasks. Um, there's also a lack of insecurity and lack of trust um, in the partner sometimes. Um, and this, as a result, causes lack of ambition and disregard. So like red flags, um, you know, you're, you're in this little cloud of infatuation that sometimes you may not notice things that could be problematic down the road, um, also known as red flags. Um, and then infatuation may be based on physical enjoyment. A couple um, who finds themselves bored without physical stimulation. All right, and you know, just to be mindful, carrying over these type of thoughts and actions into new dating relationships could potentially result in disappointment. You know, one may develop unrealistic expectations of their partners and not understand what it means to develop a true relationship. Um, so basically, kind of uh, to simplify it, um, let's say like, you know, from the get-go of when I really wanted to explore and date and, you know, see how things goes, having these unrealistic expectations from the beginning, you know, oh, I'm so in love, like this person's the person I want to be, like he needs to do this or she needs to do that. Um, it, it may be damaging or potentially create a toxic situation or even harmful situation down the road. Not always, but it could possibly. Jealousy. Um, many people glamorize jealousy by saying it's a sign of love, um, but is it? I would love to hear people's thoughts um, or it's just something to consider. And, you know, I have personally heard in the past from some of my friends or from in other individuals going, you know, through the regular routes of their relationships, they say a person that is not jealous is not in love. Like, you need to be jealous. Like, this person means that they're, you know, they want you, they're fighting for you, etc. I'm sure some of you have heard some of these things. Um, but this could potentially be a sign of insecurity and reflected of seeing your partner as an object or to be possessed, so kind of like possessiveness or, you know, controlling. Um, and it often stems from both desire and insecurity, but not commonly love. It could, but you know, that's something you need to be intuitive about in your relationship or the um, partnership you're with, you're in. Um, I would like to acknowledge that jealousy um, overall is a property of many relationships um, emerging out of the dynamics of the couple a product of their particular version of in intimacy. So when and how you feel and express jealousy has to do with you and the person you're with and how you relate as a couple. Um, and the other side of this, you know, I mentioned insecurity, I kind of mentioned the negative sides, but jealousy can be a sign of feeling deeply in love with a partner and it could contribute to, um, I guess you could say relationship satisfaction by signaling emotional commitment and investment. So I do want to make that other side clear, like more or less the per positives or the healthy side of the relationship. 
Um, so it can it can contribute to relationship stability. That's all um, by prompting partners to further nurture their bond and actively protect their union. Um, so there's both sides of jealousy. It's just you know we need once again just being intuitive about it um, and having that discussion. Jealousy continued. If a partner continuously lashes out, is demanding, doesn't have boundaries, is controlling, I, I kind of mentioned this in the previous slide, thinks of their own feelings first, can't empathize, doesn't have trust, has rigid thinking, etc. It's very possible that the relationship is genuinely not becoming one of, one of love. And I, I say this again just because I want to um, focus um, specifically this piece of jealousy with teens and young adults. Um, I have a lot of siblings of my, of my own, um, and they're all teenagers for the most part. And I thought of, um, while I was covering jealousy was this idea of these tracking apps or like how I have a sister who's obsessed with Snapchat and goes on like the Snapchat map or find my friends. They all have their locations. And so, um, what I'm trying to say is like, the find my friends and Snapchat map on Snapchat is maybe useful for a parent uh, or guardian to know where their child is and it's necessary for their well-being and safety. Um, when dating partners or someone you're talking to, as they could say, or, you know, are with or dating, feel the need to check up on one another, this is a way that um, jealousy may blossom or flourish in a, in a negative way. And this could potentially end up like resulting in how, well, this shows just how trust and respect can begin to erode even from the very beginning. Basically what I'm trying to say for like young teens um, and adolescents is that trust is not in, in a tracking app. It's not in Snapchat. It's not based off of things like this. All right. Here is a wonderful quote that speaks to our presentation by Maya Angelou. I am grateful to have been loved and to be loved and now to be able to love. Because that liberates, love liberates. It doesn't just hold. That's ego. Love liberates. It doesn't bind. Moving on. What to do. It is not a bad idea to talk with an individual about emotional control and appropriate thinking. Um, while getting a carried away with love sounds exciting and appealing, things can suddenly go wrong in relationships and knock any potential for real love completely off course sometimes. Navigating these emotions. So I, I really did want to focus primarily on adolescents and young teens, as well as just young adults and old, I mean, the teenage range young adults. Um, but this can be applicable to everyone. Um, with adolescents and young teens, um, inform the kids that healthy relationships may not, well, may start out with chemistry, um, a feeling that's common of connection, um, that warm or fiery feeling with someone is just a start. So shared interests, common beliefs, and respect for the other person are what will make a relationship last. So I think it's important to inform our kids and, you know, our adolescents, our young teens about this idea of chemistry. Like this conversation may be uncomfortable, but it could have um, potential negative impacts down the road with their relationships that they attempt to establish. Um, for older teens and young adults, chemistry that leads to sex can make the meaning of love even more confusing quality relationships building over time is what ma what will make a relationship work best and partners need to see how each person will handle themselves uh, not only in good times but in bad times of stress um, and difficulty to decide if they've found the right partner um, I want to add to this like the second part of older teens and young adults whether many of us want to admit it or not, sex for many people is assumed to allow for a deeper connection with another person. And that's okay, oftentimes it does, but there is also the other side of um, essentially what I said earlier about sex can make the meaning of love very confusing and it can really blur the lines. And then I want to say that uh, it's safe to say that quality relationship building over time is what make a relationship work best partners really just need to see how each person will handle themselves not only in good times but in times of stress and difficulty to decide if they found a worthwhile you know partner 
And then I want to add this piece of um, parents, you know, a lot of parents are teaching their kids about the mechanics of sex and birth control, which is wonderful. This is what we want to do, you know, preventative based education, you know, ensuring that they're healthy and they're talking about these physical risks. But I think a piece that we frequently leave out um, is talking about the emotional risk, the emotional vulnerability that comes with entering a relationship that, you know, they might get their heart broken or like heartbreak is okay. Or, you know, you might have chemistry with someone, but what does that mean? You know, we, we commonly overlook these type of conversations. Um, so I just want to, um, put that out there and then you know parents don't have to go into the personal like their personal lives with their children um meaning like they don't have to get really personal with their children when they're talking about navigating emotions about chemistry and heartbreak you know they can look you know to the media when they notice an accurate portrayal of love whether it's a tv show or a book or a movie and they can talk about how they see that relationship on tv and how it doesn't accurately portray what's real like what does what do, does this relationship look like in life like it could be something as simple as that um and then I think if a parent has been, you know, divorced, married, uh, married their first love, their high school sweethearts, um, they had a series of failed relationships, even, you know, uh, even getting as personal as you're comfortable with, you know, potentially violent or traumatic experiences, whatever, you know, works within, you know, the extent of your comfortability. But, um, I think these are things that could potentially be discussed, you know, with children. Um, you know, we as adults have the wisdom and whether it's about mistakes we've made or the good choices we've made, um, I think we can share this with our kids and young people. And continuing with navigating emotions, receiving, I, this is something that um, I frequently talk about with individuals, but it's something that is real. Receiving a gift can generate feelings of gratitude in romantic partners, increasing their liking and attraction towards the giver and improving compliance with later requests. On the other hand, receiving a gift might also generate negative feelings of obligation and not lead to uh, reciprocity, so essentially uh, giving back. Um, gifts can also be seen negatively in terms of power and control. Feelings of being purchased, exploitation, trying to impress, guilt, or having ulterior um, motives. Um, I would like to say overall the effects of receiving a gift, um, taking essentially, are complicated and varied. And, and that's okay, we just need to be mindful of that. Um, it, can, it can really mean, you know, it can be a good thing or a bad thing. So it's just something... And that's also, if we look into it online, you can look up love languages. Some people may not be, be affectionate, and tomorrow you'll see that in another presentation of ours, um, the four C's in a relationship. And, you know, going back to this idea of love languages, um, you know, some people may be good at gift giving. This is how they show their affection, while others, you know, are caring or they're, you know, they just express their gratitude and love differently other than giving gifts. Um, it's just a matter of um, really understanding the, essentially, the idea behind, of, behind the reason of gift giving or the intention, really. And then, um, actually, going back to navigating emotions, I do want to address uh, pregnancy as well. Um, there have been a lot of, uh, there has been discussion with a lot of individuals about how a bringing a baby in the world could potentially rectify a troubled, um, or struggling relationship. And yes, bringing a baby in the world can bring a couple closer together. Having a baby can create a bond that encourages mature personal growth, um, and strengthens a couple's commitment to each other. Um, but do we know if that happens often does it happen at all and, and it definitely doesn't happen overnight i know that um, but it's something that's possible but also we need to acknowledge that fragile love and pregnancy aren't necessarily the combination you want um, a struggling relationship only becomes more complicated and typically ends up dissolving faster when additional pressure is put on one or both of the partners 
Um, so really just understanding, um, you know, where you want to be, how you want to grow, and will this strengthen your guys' commitment to one another, or will it actually tear you guys apart or break you guys apart? So what this all means, um, allow enough time to pass during a relationship to see it fully flower, respect yourself and the other person, open up over time at your pace with appropriate emotional vulnerability and develop trust over time. Real love should never be in a hurry, demand attention, or be an act of desperation. Love involves respect for each other, for each person, for who they are while they're seeking to care about another. And more importantly, love comes in many different forms, but there are some basic tenets of relationships that one can convey that are not controversial. Um, once again, you'll see that in one of our presentations tomorrow, and we also have presented this on our Facebook uh, timeline about healthy relationships um, and a couple other ones. Thank you all.